Hello everyone and welcome back to the Maker's Workbench. I'm Charles and in this video we're going to take an in-depth look at a premium temperature controlled soldering station that's made right here in the USA. So stick around. I was recently approached by a company named Edson, and they asked me if I would be interested in reviewing a few of their products to help them get their name out in the maker community. And when I found out that their products were made right here in the USA, I happily agreed and asked them to send over a few soldering stations, as well as some accessories, and I would put together a series of review videos over the coming months. This is the first of that video series. In full disclosure, they sent me everything I asked for free of charge, but I'm not going to let that bias my review. I received several products to review, but the focus of this video is going to be on the Loner 971E, a temperature controlled soldering station that is part of Edson's legacy line. This soldering station retails at an MSRP of $269, which is a little expensive for the average tinkerer who's not soldering that much, but Edson justifies this price by utilizing the highest quality components and manufacturing all of their products in Van Nuys, California. Unlike the throwaway knockoff Chinese soldering stations, Edson soldering stations are repairable and parts are readily available, and Edson backs the 971E with an 18 month warranty. This is a big deal for anyone like myself who likes to buy once and is not a fan of the disposable culture surrounding modern day electronics. Edson says that the Loner 971E is a high performance soldering station that has been specifically designed for ROHS and lead free applications where heavy duty and multi layer boards require more power, precise temperature control, Control, as well as rapid heat up and recovery times. The Loner 971E features an innovative direct tip 2 heater design that delivers the extra power you need for heavy soldering applications as well as providing a more accurate and stable temperature at the tip for precision work. With a power range of 15 to 220 watts and a temperature scale of 400 to 800 degrees Fahrenheit, the 971E has plenty of power for most through hole and SMD PCB hand soldering work you might need to do. Edson has also made calibrating the Loner 971E quick and simple by providing a pair of adjustment pots on the back of the unit. You can use a thermocouple to help calibrate things or you can purchase a dedicated calibration jig directly from Edson that will provide a repeatable and reliable calibration each and every time. Unlike many of the Chinese knockoff soldering stations on the market today, Edson sells dozens of different tips in just about every shape, size, and tip diameter you can think of, making the 971E quite versatile in production, R&D, and hobbyist environments. Additionally, unlike many of its competitors, the Loner 971E utilizes a threaded handle to make changing tips quick and easy without the need for wrenches or pliers to loosen the tip's collar. As you can see, the direct tip to heater technology not only heats from the outer walls of the ceramic heating element, but from an inner core as well. This not only provides very fast heat up times, but allows for far more accurate temperature sensing as well. I wanted to include more info on Edson's soldering tip offerings in this video, but I decided to separate that out into its own video that really dives deep into soldering tips, how to maintain them, and how to choose the right tip for the job. Perched on top of the Loner 971E is the tool pod, which serves as the soldering iron holder, but it's more than just a place to store the iron. The tool pod serves as a barrier between the hot soldering iron and your lab's environment. This prevents convection currents and airflow from cooling the iron's tip, resulting in less energy usage while the iron is idle. This means that there will be less wear on the tip from heat cycling as well as less wear on the ceramic heating element itself. The tool pod also features a disposable liner inside that collects any solder that may drip off the tip during idle times and prevents damage to the tool pod and the bench top below. Additionally, unlike open air soldering iron holders, Edson's tool pod prevents accidental burns or damage to equipment that might fall onto an otherwise exposed soldering iron that's 400 degrees Fahrenheit or more. The Loner 971E also features a removable base that stores a soldering sponge or brass shavings ball under the unit itself. This helps to further reduce the footprint of the soldering station even more during storage. Let's take a look at the Loner 971E in action, but before we get to that footage, I want to thank one of our channel's sponsors, Starbond. Starbond has sponsored the Maker's Workbench going on two years now, and I use their products for everything from gluing 3D printed parts together to filling holes in woodworking projects, and even as a finish on many of my wood turning projects. Starbond is the freshest CA glue on the market, with new batches being shipped from Japan weekly. This isn't the cheap CA glue you find in the big box stores that dries out before you can use it. 
This is a premium CA glue that has been formulated for a superior bond, excellent curing times, and great shelf stability. In fact, Starbond guarantees 30 months of shelf life for their standard clear CA glues when kept under the recommended temperature of 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Starbond CA glues are available in white, brown, black, and clear, and with more than two dozen formulations of varying viscosities, Starbond has the right CA glue for any project you can think of. Visit Starbond.com today by clicking the link in the description below and use code TMWB10 at checkout to receive 10% off your entire order. In doing so, the Maker's Workbench will receive a small commission from Starbond, and as an added bonus, they will continue to support our projects in the future. I use Starbond, and I would not recommend it if their CA glues were not everything they advertise it to be. With that said, let's move on to some actual soldering. Today I'm soldering an Atmega328 development kit from protostack.com. And while I get started soldering this board up, I want to take a few moments to talk a little about Edson's history as I feel it's important to the review and it's a bit of history that helped grow the American tech industry into the unrelenting force it is today. Like many of the early tech companies in the U.S., Edson was founded in 1961 by Bill and Shirley Fortune in their garage when Bill invented the world's first desoldering pump, which was dubbed the Solderpult by Bill's wife Shirley. The Solderpult was groundbreaking for its time, and with its success, Bill and Shirley decided to name their new company Edson, which is an acronym for Engineering Designed to Suit Your Needs. The company quickly grew, and over the years, Edson continued to innovate and bring new products to market. They received patents on many of their products, including including the world's first temperature-controlled soldering iron, the first hot air SMD rework station, the first rotating filter fume extractor, the first portable cordless soldering station to utilize lithium-ion battery technology, and was even the first soldering technology manufacturer to test soldering equipment in space via NASA's Gateway program in the 1980s. The list goes on and on, and I'll talk more about some of these innovations in future videos. As you can see, the Loner 971E had no problem soldering these simple through-hole joints, and there was zero recovery time throughout this board build despite all of its connection points being placed through holds, which can sometimes require more power to solder than a simple pad solder point might. The iron feels very comfortable in my hand and even after using the Loner 971E for a couple of months now, I have yet to experience any hand fatigue. I attribute this to its unique ergonomic design and soft foam rubber grip, as well as a very flexible lead running back to the base. I'm also digging the tool pod a lot thanks to its conical shaped opening which allows me to basically toss the iron in and not have to worry about it falling back out. That simple feature saves a great deal of time and becomes effortless as your muscle memory begins to take over. I own a Weller and several Chinese Heiko knockoffs and none of those soldering stations come close to the short heat up times of the Loner 971E. Additionally, this station approaches the set temperature limit quite quickly where other stations I own seem to throttle down a lot when approaching the required temperature, which can sometimes almost double heat up times. I can turn the 971E on and it's ready to go within 30 seconds which saves me time, money, and a lot of frustration. I really like the removable base, but I wish it were designed to lock into the base of the soldering station as it's just free floating. I haven't had any issues with the station falling off the base, but I could see how a careless hand could knock it off the base fairly easily. I also wish the base came with both a brass soldering sponge as well as a standard cellulose based soldering sponge, but brass sponges are cheap enough just to add one yourself. Unlike the cheap Chinese knockoffs that I had, the temperature adjustment knob on the 971E has a very smooth, tight feel to it. This makes micro adjustments quick and easy. The temperature scale on the label is quite accurate and I was surprised at how easy it was to read despite having a silver background. The LED indicator light is a nice touch as well and I really like the front mounted power button as opposed to the side or rear mounted power switches on my other soldering stations. The blue LED glow around the knob, cord port, and base are a nice touch as well. So what are my overall thoughts on the Loner 971E? Honestly, it's a very high quality soldering station that you would expect to find in an R&D lab or a repair shop that needs an all day long workhorse for soldering up through hole or large SMD components. While the 971E is advertised as a lead free Rojas compliant device, I am actually out of lead free solder so all of my testing was done with everyone's go to Kester 6040 and as you've seen it flows nicely and melts quickly with the 971E. As I mentioned early on in this video, the Loner 971E is a bit pricey when compared to other soldering stations of similar power, but most of, if not all of those soldering stations are not easily repairable, do not feature an 18 month warranty, and do not have repair parts readily available. 
Additionally, the soldering station is made in the USA, which means that every cell directly benefits Americans and American manufacturing, something that is near and dear to my heart and something that I'm willing to pay a little extra for. Do I recommend it? Absolutely. I like this soldering station so much that I gave away all of my others except for one, which I'm going to turn into a dedicated heat set brass insert tool for my 3D printing projects. As I alluded to earlier, I like to buy the best equipment I can afford and I only want to buy it once and the Edson Loner 971E definitely feels like a lifetime tool. When you top that with it being made in the USA, I have to give it my full seal of approval and endorsement. If you would like to purchase the Loner 971E for your workbench, I have left two links in the description below. The first link is an Amazon affiliate link, meaning I will earn a small commission from Amazon from every sale made via that link. The second link is to the 971E's product page on Edson.com. I do not earn any commission from this link, but that's okay. By using the first link, you directly support the Maker's Workbench, but by using the second link, you indirectly support the Maker's Workbench as well by letting Edson know that we sent them the traffic, which will lead to them sending us more products to review, as well as possible project sponsorships in the future. That's going to wrap up this video. Before this video ends, I just want to ask that you give this video a thumbs up if you found this tutorial helpful in any way and that you consider subscribing to the channel as well as ringing the notification bell so that you get notified when I post new content or start a live stream. Only 8% of you who watch this video are subscribed and even less are receiving notifications when I post new content. I'm really pushing hard to grow this channel in 2021 and I'm doing this full time, at least for the time being. So knowing that you enjoy the content really helps motivate me to create new videos. And that's going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my content and as always, hack the world and make awesome.